dark and all alone, growing comfortable. Are you too scared to move and walk out of this tomb? Buried underneath lies that you believe, safe and sound, stuck in the ground, too lost to be found. You're just asleep. It's time to leave. Come on and rise up. Take a breath. You're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? Your brand new power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? Ooh, rise up. Rise up. When he said your name, thing that filled your veins, more than blood, kind of love, wash your sin away. Now the door is open wide, stone's been rolled aside, the old is gone, light has come. So come on and rise up, take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, your brand new power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus. Ooh, rise up, come on and rise up. He's calling us to walk out of the dark. He's given us new resurrected hearts. He's calling us to walk out of the dark. He's given us new resurrected hearts. Come on and rise up. Take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, your brand new power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? Rise up, rise up, out from the grave like Lazarus. Rise up, oh, rise up, out from the grave like Lazarus. morning. Excellent. Hang on a second, I got a little problem here. All right. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood, even though it's a little overcast and cool. <clears throat> it's even cold enough for me to put on my robes. It's kind of nice. I like the blue color. I only get to wear them for four weeks out of a year, so that's good. First Sunday of Advent, <clears throat> so we have our Advent wreath down here that Helen and Dave made for us, so we thank them for that. <clears throat> also, remind you, we will be starting midweek live stream services, 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. It's the Haugen um, Holden Evening Prayers, and I'll, I will post that on the website, on the worship videos and liturgies page, so that you can download that and, and have it can follow along and sing the responses with us. I also remind you that um, when Saturday morning Zoom will, re will resume this coming Saturday at uh, 10 o'clock for the Bible study, so be ready for that and come and join us. We always learn a lot from each other as we, as we spend time together. We hope you all had a good Thanksgiving and ate too much as I did <coughs> and enjoyed yourselves. And now I need to turn it over to our illustrious president, Norm. Thanks, Pastor. Good morning. Hey, I just want to remind everybody, again, for 8 December, it's on a Tuesday, we're having our, our end of the year council meeting. Uh, we're doing that this year on a Tuesday where we would normally, you know, do that uh, in between services. Uh, but due to our pandemic, 
that we're that we're currently dealing with, we decided to do that or to hold our congregation meeting on 8 December. So on a Tuesday at 6 p.m. we'll Zoom, and uh, we will be here in Fellowship Hall, mostly council, but you're more than welcome to attend uh, as long as we can certainly adhere to social distancing. Uh, I see that the tree is out. Uh, which is also cool the the, uh, the season is certainly upon us and you should have uh, received the 2021 mission budget plan uh, that we're planning to project or to show and discuss and vote on uh, on 8 december which is again a tuesday and we will post that here in in fellowship hall the financials and then we'll also post our council and committee chair org chart uh, just so that you guys can see who your council members are and uh, who you can reach out to in the event that you have questions. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Pastor. And like, as he said, I hope everybody had a great, fantastic uh, Thanksgiving. I don't know if any of you have ever swimmed in 50 degree weather, but if you'd like to, my pool is open. Thanks. That's all I got. Oh, thank you, Norm. Heated pools, what a concept. We gather this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained minister of the church, by Christ's command and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the first hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue as we like and bless the, the Advent wreath. praise you, O God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep, that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. <coughs> Enlighten us with your grace, and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. We continue with the readings. be exceeding angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read with me Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. The 
second reading is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, the first chapter. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, that he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. <clears throat> from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, <clears throat> this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert. For you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Can everybody hear me? Because we're having a little trouble with our transmitter this morning. I think we're going to invest in another one. <coughs> As you've noticed, <coughs> we are now in the Gospel of Mark. We are in what's known as year B in the liturgical circles. Um, we, we, we operate in the Gospels on a three-year cycle. Matthew, and then Mark, and then Luke, and then back to Matthew again. I've been doing this cycle for a long time, and so I've preached on all these texts many times, and but never have I preached on, on this text known as the Little Apocalypse in this context. Mark is the earliest of the Gospels, probably written sometime around 70 A.D. It's also the shortest of the Gospels, and most of its content can be found also in Matthew and Luke, so it's clear that they used this Gospel as they wrote theirs. <coughs> The theme of this gospel is the shadow of the cross and suffering. It always, anything that you read in the gospel of Mark, you need to be thinking about and looking towards the, the cross. Jesus will talk about blessings in chapter 10, but he'll also talk about persecution in chapter 10 of the gospel of Mark. And so it is a, it is a gospel that is written for the Roman church under, when they were being um, persecuted by Nero. And so they needed some some understanding of what was going on with their lives, same as we do today, I think. The two sections prior to this, the first part of this, got, this 13th chapter is the entirety of what's known as the Little Apocalypse, and Jesus and the disciples are all sitting on the, on the, on the, the, um, temp, on the uh, Mount of Olives, and his disciples ask him, you know, they're talking about how beautiful this, this the temple is, you know, and Jesus says that it may be, it may be beautiful, but it's all going to come tumbling down. It's going to be pulled down to the ground before it's all said and done. And his disciples ask him, well, when is this going to happen? And Jesus tells them about the persecutions that are coming and how it's going to be difficult for even families to get along and that 
people are, you know, fathers are going to turn their kids over to the authorities, and their kids are going to turn their families, their mom and dad over to the authorities. And then Jesus talks about the desolating sacrilege that occurs in the temple. <clears throat> and talks about how as things devolve during that period of time, that people don't even need to come out of their houses. They need to flee, if anything, because what's happening is not going to be good. And then we get what we had today in our gospel lesson, and the theme of all this business that Jesus is talking about. He uses the words, be alert, over and over in this 13th chapter. Be awake, he says. Keep awake. Be alert. Be paying attention, because you don't know when the Son of Man will return. The chaos that is depicted in this 13th chapter really reminds me of a good deal of what's going on in our society and our culture today. With all the political wrangling that's been going on and the selfish interests that have been put forth and, and, and worked on by our politicians <clears throat> who don't seem to care anything about us, it kind of reminds me of what Jesus is talking about there. There's a total lack of servant leadership, as I said last Sunday, in our world today, in our country today. There is no such thing as servant leadership in our, in our country, and we see the results of it. We see the devastation that it has caused in our society, and so it's important for us to keep awake in these times and don't allow this, this wrangling and this, this attitude of, of take what you can when you can get it to enter into our house. We need to make sure we keep it outside, keep it at bay. We need to remain awake and be alert, be on the alert for these things as we live our lives of servant leadership under Jesus. We have this, uh, the problem we have is that we have this pro propensity for living unconsciously, you know? We have, I have a ritual every morning that I go through, and if I don't go through that routine, and I, I'll miss something. I'll forget to do something. So we all have our routines by which we live, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is we fall into these routines in our lives, and we lose sight of and we miss the opportunities to see Jesus in the world and in our lives. And so this is even a more important time for us to be awake, to keep ourselves, ourselves alert as we live our lives in the world be conscious, conscious as we live. Be in the moment, always. Don't let our routines and our habits make us blind to seeing Jesus in the world. So we need to be alert, always. This morning, we, our opening hymn was, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. This is an ancient prayer, folks. It goes back to the 5th century when the Vandals and the Huns were pillaging Europe and <clears throat> took down Rome. People were exiled. Millions of people were sent into exile by this, by this raiding that was going on in Europe and in, in Rome. The great libraries of Europe were looted. And so Europe fell into the Dark Ages at this point. And that prayer is about being returned from exile and come, come Lord Jesus, come now. Seems to me that we can also feel that way ourselves today as we yearn to be able to go back into the building here to worship instead of sitting out here in our cars with a mask on. It would be nice if we could go back. We yearn for that day. And people ask me about that quite often. Well, Pastor, when do you think we'll get to go back inside? And my answer was always, I'm not quite sure, but probably after June of next year. So we pray this prayer, come, oh come Emmanuel, and give us comfort and return us from exile. We join our prayers to those of our ancestors who sang or prayed this prayer as well as we wait. We wait expectantly for Jesus to return or for our return into the building where we're comfortable, and where we feel at home and welcome. So my sisters and brothers, we wait, but we stay awake. We keep alert as we wait for times to change, 
as we wait for this vaccine to be distributed and for it to take its effect and to clean up this business we call the pandemic <clears throat> so that we can get back to normal, somewhat normal life again. But as we walk this walk, as we pray this prayer, O come Emmanuel, we know that our Lord is with us. We know that he walks with us through this business. He knows everything that we have to do and everything that we have in our feelings and our emotions and our yearnings and our needs because he's one of us. He became one of us. And he gives himself to us again today in word and in the sacrament. And so as we come today to receive our Lord, be reminded of his presence in your life. Be reminded that he is with you. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep awake and know that our Lord is with us always.
we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. We pray for this planet in need of restoration for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth in our relationship to it. Hear us, O God, and mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O God, for mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O God, We pray for the people in our families and congregations who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Healing God, hear the prayers of your people as we lift them up to you by name, out loud or in our hearts. Pray for all who are on our prayer list. Visit them with your healing spirit. We pray for the faculty, staff, and students of Kennesaw State University as they continue their mission of education. And we pray for our sister congregation, Mount Zion AME Church. Bless and preserve them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who place themselves in harm's way as they minister to all who are stricken with COVID-19 virus. Strengthen comfort and protect them with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for our presiding Bishop Elizabeth and our Bishop Kevin. Give them the wisdom and clarity of vision they need as they lead our church in this time of pandemic. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Thank you for saints now departed who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example, that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Hear us, O God. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing. Those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Generous God, you have created all that is and to provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray.
is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. of bitterness you did not abandon us but guided us into the path of love and light in every age you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity the cry of the poor has become your own cry our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire in the fullness of time you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted to break bread with the outcast and despised and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is being given up for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is being shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come Lord Jesus, and let the church say amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come spirit of freedom and let the church say amen. Amen. <clears throat> Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now we're bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who bears away the sin of the world. Thanks be to God.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace to everlasting life. Amen. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.